working on uh, mapping our way forward as we uh, we are quite aware of the uh, the advent of COVID-19 has really shook uh, the aviation industry to the core and uh, believing that uh, working with yourself in the uh, uh, portfolio committee and in parliament we should be able to assist in particular the aviation industry to get back to its glorious days because if uh, all of us would recall is that uh, uh, aviation in South Africa has been uh, uh, those uh, SOEs uh, which actually has been able to be self-sufficient to be able to provide but now highly challenged and we're looking forward that uh, we should be able to be part of the people who can be able to contribute positively towards the rebuilding of the economy and the industries in South Africa. Uh, probably say this is an opportune moment for us to can be able to reshape ourselves in a better way, looking at the entirety of South Africa, uh, Africa as a whole, but also believing that we can be able to climb the the world stage in a very sophisticated uh, trajectory. I'm going to be giving to the DG uh, uh, and uh, uh, past the DG will be able to request the chairperson of AXA to talk. Thank you very much, chairperson. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, DM. Uh, I'm sure you have forgotten to give us the apology from the minister. My, my apology, uh, uh, Chairperson, uh, the minister is, is held up. Uh, uh, and I think between me, the DG, CEO, and Chairperson of AXA, we can be able to uh, sufficiently provide you with, with information that we believe will be of assistance to the, the citizenry of the Republic of South Africa. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. No, thanks. Thanks. You are welcome, Honorable. DM, Honorable uh, DG. Director General. Unmute your video. DG. Uh, DM, seemingly, seemingly, yeah, seemingly I think DG drinking water. Uh, I think the DG probably uh, has been cut it off in the eventuality is not coming in. Let me allow the chairperson of AXA to speak to the issues uh, Thank and you. introduce the presenter who is the CEO. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairperson, uh, thank you, thank you very much, Chairperson, uh, Deputy Minister, the Honourable Members of the Portfolio Committee, officials of the Department of Transport. Uh, let me first thank you, Chairperson, for having uh, invited us to present to the uh, to present our corporate plan for for 2021-2023. Uh, because, Chairperson, we have indicated Chairperson, that, uh, can, you see, can you see your face? I know uh, IT and some people uh, are not very friendly, but uh, for the sake of my meeting, can I see your face? There you are. Thank uh, you very okay. much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, because, Chairperson, we have indicated that uh, uh, we don't have much time, I was supposed to give a presentation on the context. And what I will do, Chairperson, is to just highlight the, 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 the essential features of the context, uh, as you had uh, suggested. And thereafter, I'll, I'll hand over to the management to make a, the presentation of the corporate plan. Uh, as you know, Chairperson, that our 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 strategy, our strategic plan, and the corporate plan were developed at the time when the context was totally different 
uh, it was still before the advent of the of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was still before the downgrade of uh, of the country's rating, as well as the economic situation was not as best as it currently is at that time. So that being the case, we are now confronted with what is normally referred to as the new normal. And that new normal is going to definitely impact upon the substance of what we have developed as the corporate plan, as well as the strategic plan. That being the case, Chairperson, Honorable Members, I would like to point out that we are currently in the process of reviewing uh, 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 the corporate plan as well as the as the strategic plan of the of the of the company, so that it can respond to to the to the so-called new normal. Uh, without any further ado, Chairperson, I would like to hand over to the CEO of the of the to the management of the company. Uh, the management today is represented by the CEO, Mbumimbofu, um, as well as the Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Mtetwa. Over to you, uh, CEO. Thank you to the Chairperson of the Board, the Chair Honorable Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee, on transport, the honorable members of the portfolio committee, deputy minister of transport and the DG of the department and advisors I've seen are here with us. The director of civil aviation authority um, and other colleagues who are present here with us. Chairperson, to align ourselves with your request, we will treat the presentation as read and we will focus on three elements that we've been requested to. If you can go to the contents slide. We will focus, Chairperson, on uh, number four, which deals with the KPIs in the corporate plan. We will deal with number five, which is a consolidated financial plan. We'll deal with what was an additional request for us to reflect on the impact of COVID-19. And finally, we will uh, speak to the state of readiness for level three, as we were requested to provide an update. We'll go through all the slides, but very quickly, Chairperson, but only focus on those that I have highlighted. And there we indicate what the Chairperson is confirming, which is really that we, we are basic, basically recalibrating and we are revising the corporate plan that was submitted both to you and the Department of Transport. Move to the next slide. In this slide, Chair, I'd like to highlight there are several slides that follow this, but speak to the importance of what we've done in adjusting the corporate plan to the seven priorities outlined in the electoral mandate and in the State of the Nation address. Principally, priority number one on the economy transformation and job creation. Priority number seven, a better world and a, bet a better Africa and a better world and priority number four, which deals with spatial transformation, human settlements, and local government. The importance of that is contained in the slides that follow. I won't deal with them in detail, but just to indicate on this one that our focus on trade and tourism and e-commerce and linking up to the very important strategic programs of government, which would facilitate priority number seven. Move to the next slide. On the next slide, we provide more detail about the economic linkages and move to the next one. On economic transformation as well, we highlight the activities that will be relevant to us um, as AXA, including job creation and reducing illicit economy activities. On the next slide, we link to the infrastructure broad programs and the spatial development framework, but importantly, integrate ourselves into affordable, safe, and reliable public transport networks. 
On the next slide, we deal with what we've been provided by the Department of Transport as very clear mandate that relates to the strategic thrust of the department, enabling service delivery, economic growth and job creation, social emancipation and economy. On the next slide, we highlight very importantly the transformation agenda and the empowerment programs that basically uh, require us as AXA to operate within that context. In the mandate, Jefferson, just a reminder of our vision 2025, our pride values, our commitment to stakeholders, our strategic proposition, and our pledge to customers and acting within the legislative context. On the next one, our footprint, uh, international footprint of activities of concessions and technical and advisory services across the world. The operating model is contained on the next slide, which illustrates business management, business operations, and business enablement, which is basically our current operating model. And the next slide deals with our organizational structure. Um, on the next part, we then deal with the issue of our strategy. In the strategy chair, we'll remind you that in Vision 2025, we do three primary things, run airports, develop airports, and grow the footprint. And we've aligned ourselves with three horizons so by 2020, 2025, and beyond 2025, which are the uh, periods during which we implement various parts of, of, of that particular strategy. In the next slide, we highlight for you our uh, interaction and categorization of shareholders, government, or, or all stakeholders, government, shareholders, civil society, key customer passengers, and partners in providing the security services. In the next slide, we deal with the issue of financial implications, and there we link our strategic map with our key performance indicators. And I will move on to the strategic objectives and KPIs for 2021 specifically. Let me request for time as well that in this particular slide, we give the detail I will move to the one that summarizes all of this. So KP, the KPI uh, in relation to this one is about creating value for shareholders. Diversifying business portfolio is the next one. Um, increasing our reputation through demonstrated business excellence is the next slide uh, with our KPI for 2021. And increasing our reputation through demonstrated business excellence. Uh, the KPI for 2021 to 2023, but you'd like to focus on the 2021. Ensuring successful transformation of AXA operations is contained there, and the targets on BE score, percentage of business share and job opportunities. And then the next one is reduce environmental impact in terms of the carbon accreditation levels. The final area deals with the and business enablement areas, which are uh, business digitization, supply chain management, um, people and culture, and innovation. This is the slide I'd like to focus on, Chairperson, which the next one, which summarizes all of the previous slides and the various KPIs that we have highlighted, particularly for the financial year 2020-2021. Importantly, is to note the column on the annual target where we indicate the return on equity target of 3.6 and the return on capital employed at 4.3. The non-aeronautical revenue uh, cum cumulative for all the quarters is 3.447 billion. Um, we also indicate our target for the reputation index at greater than 65. Air service quality, the ASQ index, we're aiming to achieve four throughout the year. On BEE, we're currently classified as level two, and we aim to be in level two just for the 2021 year. We aim to move to level one in 2022. On um, the black business share of commercial revenue, we're at 55%, and we aim to retain that throughout the, the year. And job opportunities, 27,931 cumulative jobs to be created. And then finally, on the carbon accreditation footprint level, uh, to achieve level two reduction certificate at three of our airports. 
In the rest of that slide, we then indicate to you the quarterly targets and each one of them throughout the quarters as indicated um, with a cumulative at quarter four, which we'll be able to report back on. As the chairperson indicated, we will be revisiting these after we fully uh, aligned ourselves with the impact of COVID. This is what was originally submitted and we'll be reviewing them. We can indicate that in a number of the areas, as a result of losing revenue, as a result of COVID, we can indicate that we'll be missing a number of these targets um, as a result of COVID. The next part of the presentation, Chairperson, is a consolidated financial plan, and I'm going to ask the Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Spaman Lamtetwa, to take you through that part. I will come back for the last part that deals with the State of Readiness Plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mimam uh, um, CFO. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, Honorable Deputy Minister, uh, Chairperson of the Committee, members of the Committee, the DG present with us, and the officials of the Department, Chairperson of the AFSA Board. Thank you very much for the opportunity just to take you briefly uh, uh, on the financial impact of COVID-19 in particular on the financial position of uh, AXA. Um, I'll also go through briefly also on the interventions that we are currently underway to make sure that we are a sustainable business going forward. At the end, I'll just also go through some of the interventions that we are proposing, especially from a shareholder perspective in managing the financial situation that we are dealing with. But uh, at the beginning, Chairperson, um, if you, just as uh, the Deputy Minister remarked earlier and also the Chairperson of the Board, uh, as AXA pre-COVID-19, we are a very financially sound company. That is very clear uh, when you look at slide 32 to 36 of the presentation. Uh, in the MTF period, we were projecting to grow our revenue to about 10 billion. We're going to make by 2023 a profit of EBITDA of about 4.2 billion. We were investment grade and we didn't need any support from the shareholder from a borrowing consultant. From a liquidity perspective, we were sitting on average 2 billion rand of cash plus an access to about 1.5 billion of credit facilities, which we always thought was adequate to absorb any shocks that we might be experiencing. In that period, we're also anticipating to spend 17 billion rand on capital, of which 40% of that was going to be funded from cash from operations with a balance borrowed, which we could have done without uh, any assistance uh, so we are very a financially sound company before the COVID-19. As we know now, Chairperson, um, the impact of COVID-19 is quite huge. Globally, we are expecting the economic growth, uh, the, the economy to contract by at least this, uh, at 3%, 3 uh, in 2021, um, with the euro basically being one of the most affected. Uh, in South Africa, in particular, we're expecting a 5.8% contraction in, in the economy. The impact for, for us, I think, just based on the data that we are receiving from all sources, is that uh, we are likely to see a 40% reduction in traffic use. Uh, slide 43 does specify exactly the reduction across the globe in terms of traffic volume. Clearly, that is already evidence that uh, we are at least going to see a 40% reduction in revenue for AXA in 2021. Uh, if you go to slide 45 uh, of the presentation, um, what we have done as companies, obviously, faced with this reality, um, we have to 
look at ourselves and say, how do we respond to this particular situation? And on slide 45, you can see that um, there are four scenarios that are on the table. I think the scenarios basically, uh, the sensitivities that we are looking at is the traffic volumes and the sustainability of airlines. Where we are sitting now, we can see clearly that airlines are, are unsustainable. And in fact, IATA is saying that about 50% of the airlines will disappear in 2020. And the traffic volumes are, are will be quite low going forward. In fact, in six years' time, we'll still be the volume of traffic at our airports will be 20% lower than what we recorded in 2019, 2020. And so clearly, as, as the chairperson was saying, we are in what we call the new normal. Uh, in the new normal, our response is obviously to reshape our our business. Uh, create a very uh, lean and agile organization that is fit for purpose in these circumstances. We'll also use the opportunity, also take uh, some opportunities that present themselves in the form of cargo, uh, which is embedded in our Atropolis, uh, Atropolis strategy. Um, informing our view, chairperson and the members of the committee is also what is in the slides from 47 to 50. It's just an abstract of, of clips uh, from articles and, uh, uh, and also some reports out there in the market. You can clearly see that I've, I've just mentioned that what IATA is saying about the, the, the airlines. Emirates, one of the airlines that used, was highly profitable pre-COVID-19, making at least $2 billion in profit, is now seeking uh, assistance uh, from the government. So the situation is... Uh, quite uh, dire at the end. Our assessment of the normal, normal is, is informed by all these realities that we are facing uh, as, a, as a company. We've done a couple of scenarios which appear from slide 51 to 53. The difference in scenarios is either is from a 30% reduction in traffic volume all the way up to about 50%. But I must say, Chairperson and members of the committee, where we are sitting today, we are likely to see a 50% reduction in traffic volume in 2021 uh, alone. From a, the impact depends on whether a state to 50% is it, 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 it negative, it's just the extent of it. From an intervention perspective, what we are doing as a company to cushion ourselves uh, from this situation, it is coming up in 51 or 52, is that we need to reduce our operating costs by at least 1.2 billion for us to be sustainable going forward. Uh, our CapEx program, we had to cut it from what initially over six year period, about 41 billion to about 5.8 billion over the next period, of which 800 million in 2021 uh, financial year. Uh, I think what with those interventions, what we can see especially on like 52 and 53 is that at least we generate positive cash flow from operation from an EBITDA perspective. EBITDA is effectively like a cash uh, generated from, uh, from operation. But the challenge that we have, just the members of the committee, is that with the current sentiments on aviation and our downgrade as a company, um, our ability to raise debt in the market is, is basically uh, is under threat at, at, at the moment. And it's highly unlikely that uh, the lenders will give us money without some form of support from, 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 from the government. Uh, so if you go, before I go to the actual support required, um, I was just saying that the intervention that we are putting in place are not adequate. We still need, uh, on top of that, of those interventions to be able to get some kind of support, be it in form of uh, government uh, guarantees. Just briefly, before I move into the support, I just want to take you through the Moody's uh, issues, which are some on page slide 56 of the presentation. 
um, as the committee is aware, uh, on, the, on the 27th of March, Ms. Mood is downgraded as we belong uh, in that. Sorry, sorry, um, um, CFO. I hear some noise uh, in the background there. Can all the members mute uh, their microphones, please? Thank you, carry on. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I was just uh, taking through the Moody's uh, credit rating agency on the 27th of March. We were downgraded to below the investment grade. The primary reasons highlighted by Moody's is one both was the fact that the country was downgraded, so we cannot have a rating above the country. They also highlighted the impact of COVID-19 that at least see a 30% drop in trust volumes and that will impact on our cash flow. And on top of that, they also highlighted that uh, the liquidity that we have as a company won't be able to sustain us um, for the period of, of, of an intended lockdown. So that was the primary reason. On slide 56, um, we are just highlighting what could lead to a further downgrade uh, by Moody's. Um, and obviously, if the country is downgraded, we will also uh, face the same fate. Uh, if there is a significant reduction in traffic volumes, that will also lead to uh, uh, a downgrade. And also, if we can't demonstrate that we, we are liquid in the point of view of do we have enough cash plus available credit facilities to sustain us during this period? That's what could lead to a ground rate. But on the right hand side, we are just saying what could actually help us uh, in preventing a downgrade uh, as a company. And we believe that some form of government support, not in the form of a, like a guarantee for some of the debt, which I'll outline in the next slide, would be very helpful in. in preventing a possible downgrade. Uh, in strengthening the liquidity profile, uh, they just obviously, as I've said, that they just want us to make sure that we've got the, the, the credit facilities. Uh, as I've said earlier, that the lenders are, uh, are quite uh, jittery in terms of lending to the aviation sector, and we believe that we, we need uh, the support. So the support that is required uh, Chairperson is, is on the next slide. Um, assuming, obviously, a worst case scenario from our perspective of a 50% decline in traffic volumes in 2021, 20, um, we are looking in total of plus nine other 10 billion rand, but it's not at all an immediate requirement because. The guarantees that we might need in the next three years are about three billion rand. The ten billion is basically what we, we, we might need over the five-year period. And um, what will the guarantees be used for? Primarily, uh, we need about a billion rand in 2020-21, just to help us with the liquidity situation. About 3.5 billion of that will be refinancing of the debt that falls into due over this period, and the balance of it will be to fund the capital expenditure that uh, is planned over that period. So that is the essence of, and the extent of the, of the support that we might need. And what is positive, though, Chairperson and members of the committee, is that we foresee ourselves being able to repay the debt based on the cash flows that will be generating post-2021. But just given the fact that our credit rating will be uh, affected and just the, the banks and other financial institutions are uh, not willing to lend to the sector at the moment, uh, that's why we definitely need that support. That's in summary, uh, Chairperson, members of the committee, we are faced with a very serious uh, financial challenge. We are in a completely different place from where we were in February 2020. Um, 
the forecasts are clearly uh, uh, quite uh, negative for our sector in, in particular. Um, we have taken actions to, to, to manage the, the, the financial situation, obviously the reducing of cost, cutting of capex, making sure that uh, post 2021 we've got a, a cash flow that is able to sustain our, our obligation. However, despite all of that, because of the period that we are now, we some level of support from the shareholder in the form of guarantees will be welcome. And thank you very much, Chairperson and the members of the committee. Uh, <clears throat> no, thanks, uh, Nyambose. Thank you very much. Um, let's get um, back to uh, see you. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Um, the final part of the presentation deals with the COVID-19 recovery plan, and we are participating in all the necessary structures together with government and the industry to look forward to the recovery plan and the elements are contained uh, as in the next set of slides. The next slide highlights very simply the alert levels on air travel. We are currently on level four chairperson, where basically only cargo and repatriation flights are permitted and all other uh, flights are restricted. Um, and we are working only on essential services at airports and remote working for non-essential services. The level three that we are all looking forward to would prescribe for us limited domestic air travel through the restriction of number of flights per day and authorization based on reasons for travel and subject to port of entry arrangements. Limited staff complement on site and also continuing with remote working where it is possible. So that's what we've prepared and we are finalizing the plans for also in consultation with the Department of Transport. Some of what we have presented are proposals and they are still in consultation, but we have made the necessary uh, plans and are rolling out in consultation also with the CAA um, so that we are all aligned in our, to show our state of readiness uh, for level three. If we move to the next slide, we have prepared this in consultation with ACI, um, ACI Africa to be specific, and very simply established our operational principles of what a post-COVID environment should look like. This particular slide helps us to just uh, navigate the passenger journey through the airport. We will provide you with uh, specific uh, measures that we'll be putting. Initially, we start with the departure process and then we deal with the arrival process. And in the departure process, the basic principles are about changing what happens in the car park, in the cab side. Um, one of the important principles there is to limit uh, terminal access only to traveling passengers. So a restriction on meet and greet and people who generally come to the airport to see others, those would be restricted in level three. Health screening would be a critical issue as would physical distancing. If you just follow the arrows indicated in that diagram, we we'll also be re we have reviewed our check-in procedures, um, and because we'll be starting with domestic domestic uh, travel, the passenger passport control does not apply in this case. It would apply when we get to international security screening, social distancing arrangements, and basically. Uh, ensuring that we meet security requirements whilst observing the health restriction measures. Uh, uh, retail and restaurants, there are proposals being made with that respect. I'll come back to that in detail. Uh, and then very clearly the social distancing and health measures around boarding and embarkation. We're also re-looking at our hold baggage security screening 
measures and we are looking to increase protection uh, and sanitization, particularly of baggage screening and, and baggage uh, makeup. On the arrival process, um, we basically go step by step as well and look at the disembarkation process, the health screening that's necessary, physical distancing, um, and the health checks that are necessary there, the retail baggage claim is a very important area which we've had to relook at and see what we can do to improve um, our, our processes and, and then the arrivals area. Again, we indicated that we would be restricting meet and greet arrangements there, which would include for instance, people coming to pick people up. So that has implications on the curbside activities of public transport and how people get picked up uh, and parking would be restricted only to uh, people who are actually pass passengers themselves. On the next slide, we then provide those operational principles in relation to the various uh, requirements uh, guided, of course, by the COVID-19 guidelines, uh, the health guidelines, the Department of Transport guidelines as well. Mandatory PPE, very importantly, the wearing of masks and gloves in terminals and ensuring that passengers are safe, physical distance to be enforced. Physical distance and enforcement would be by markings on the floor and actually uh, guidance barriers which would enable people to observe the two meter distance that is required. Uh, we're also looking at issues related to chairs in, in the sitting arrangements where all, every alternate chair is, is uh, closed off so that people observe uh, uh, social distancing there as well. The screening of passengers and sanitization across the board. We've had to suspend our biometric systems so that we avoid increasing the number of touch points where people are forced to use their hands. Um, and we actually are promoting areas where passengers are having to do things on their, on their own rather than depending on assistance from uh, staff. Widespread uh, terminal uh, disinfection. We were doing this before the lockdown and in effect, we did quite well on the common facilities every two hours, hand sanitization, the barriers, the doorknobs, balustrades across the entire terminal uh, buildings, uh, suspension of, of terminals and equipment in certain areas. We have basically had to close off areas that would not be utilized in order to meet those requirements. And then we would actually deploy our staff to ensure operational efficiency and compliance monitoring and reporting so that we improve every day uh, what it is that we do. Experience from the continent shows in countries that have already opened up to level three that you really have to improve almost every day as long as there is an experience that shows you that your procedures and measures need improvement. Uh, Ghana is one such example where we're learning lessons where they are already operating uh, with domestic travel being permitted. The next slide then talks very specifically to the areas in South Africa for proposed level three. Repatriation flights would continue, cargo operations and essential goods would continue, limited domestic travel allowed, no international travel, limited staff complement. And importantly, in the priority activities, we have uh, submitted to DOT some suggestions around how uh, the domestic operations would, would, would preferably run. The definition of limited operations, for instance, in our instance, would suggest possibly, and it's a proposal, uh, prioritizing the, what we call the Golden Triangle, which means uh, Johannesburg, Cape Town, and Durban as a start, and limiting of operational hours, proposal of uh, 6 to 9 in the morning, 15 hours to 18 hours in the evening. There's just a demonstration for actual demand in the morning and the afternoon return uh, flights, but it can actually be increased to the hours of 6 to 18 to allow for travel only during the day, but definitely not at night, we would suggest. The interprovincial road transport becomes an important issue, and that means the feeders 
to make uh, aviation sustainable from other provinces would really be an important thing to, to relieve in order to ensure more traffic uh, in the aviation routes that are open. Then when we talk about retail, in retail we were concerned about mandatory masks and gloves and suggesting that some of the chemists and shops for food, because one of the suggestions from the aviation and airline perspective is not to serve food on board. And that would probably mean if we don't serve food on board the aircraft, which poses a, a danger on airline staff, would rather open a few food shop outlets in the airport uh, space in order to ensure pe people are provided, but only on a takeaway basis and observing social distancing as required. Compulsory baggage sanitization is an important thing and all this um, social distancing, and as I indicated, marked on the ground, taped throughout the building, whether it's on the jet bridge or pre-boarding procedure or anywhere else, uh, on, on the aircraft. The key operational dependencies, basically one of the important considerations is that if the domestic air travel is going to include scheduled services, it would be important to make uh, such a commitment and an announcement quite early because there's a lag for bookings that is absolutely necessary for the airlines to start operating on the 1st of June. And that would be an important consideration uh, in all costs because when we open, they still have to live through the lag of getting bookings so that the aircraft can, can uh, meet the required load factors. On the next slide, uh, I will not go through that detail. We just provide the state of readiness and where exactly we are with the various areas on the car park side, on access terminal, on health screening, on physical distancing, the check-in procedure and the sanitization of luggage, which becomes compulsory, security check-in points as well, embarkation and boarding, we highlight what passengers would be obliged to do in that environment, and then the commercial and retail services, as I indicated, very limited, uh, car, car rental only and other activities only for passengers uh, and not for other visitors. And then baggage claim, uh, an important area to maintain social distancing. State of readiness alertness, we highlight there some of the salient features. The recovery plans are guided by ACI. We have risk mitigation measures already in place. Our human resource plans are also in place. Standard procedures, standard operating procedures, we're working with SACAR as they will indicate, um, which basically has put us all in a pl place where we're quite comfortable about what we're suggesting about level three. So we'll be able to activate the plans, resume operations and airport recovery uh, as a response to easing down the lockdown. In conclusion, Chair, in terms of our full presentation, we've indicated and positioned AXA as a key player in Africa and the world, aligned our global strategy to international pres prescripts, position ourselves importantly, we must say even more so now with COVID, as a central player in the South African economy through aviation, tourism, and trade. Long-term sustainability and value creation, win-win partnerships, more partnerships are required in the post-COVID environment. Those who don't do partnerships will probably not survive. So we need to be very prudent about how we move forward and what our business strategy is. Um, passenger experience continue to be advanced, digitizing the business, and basically, making sure that we, sus we have sustainability and transformation programs, and particularly environmental sustainability. We have to respond with agility to COVID-19, as the chairperson indicated, but importantly, government support through guarantees and infrastructure investment programs would really assist us to deal with the negative effects of COVID. We are ready, would be ready to implement level three, as I indicated, primarily in the three big airports from the 1st of June, and further work is still to be done with DOT around the specifics and the final state of readiness in accordance with the uh, standard operating procedures um, by the 1st of June. Thank you, Chairperson. That brings us to the end of the entire presentation. <clears throat> you, you have not done very bad. You tried your level best. Um,
Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I think that's that's the that's the end of it, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Um DM. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, I think uh, the presentation, uh, members will engage with the presentation, but uh, it's very informative uh, probably to the members. Uh, even beyond the portfolio committee, it's something that they can be able to really use as a catechism or a Bible chapter uh, in the book of Proverbs on a daily basis of the book of Psalm on a daily basis that they will read. <laughs> thank you, thank you, DM. <clears throat> Honorable members, the floor is now ours. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, we should be done by half past and allow a, a, a presentation so we can take up until 22. Half past will then give back to the department. Uh, let me get hands of those who want to speak. Okay, uh, Honorable McDonald is, is here. Now I can hear him at the back round there. Number one. Honorable Marcos Honorable Stole. Okay, Honorable um, Stole. Honorable Marcos Sene. Yes. Manu. Honorable Manu, not Manu. Manu. Uh, not much. James, uh, uh, did you see? Uh, uh, Honorable McDonald, you are number four. Can you hear me, Chairperson? Yeah, number five, Honorable May, who's the next? Okay. There's Honorable no Honorable Ramadou. Hansinga, number seven. Well just no, I think I raised my hand. No, I think you can... no, talk. Just talk. Don't don't raise your hand. Talk. Honorable uh, Pena. Pena, you can raise your hand. You can raise your hand. Okay, thank you, my Pena. You are number eight. Honorable. Uh, Uda. Thank you. Number one. Mondays. Honorable stories. Honorable Tabango. 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 My, my my first question, Chairperson, I want to find out the state of, of rateness. Do they have enough mask, enough masks, enough enough and the other 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 chair that I want to find out about the, 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 the capacity. Do they have the capacity for screening and monitoring of, of social distance? Because we are facing a problem of of social distancing. Do they have the capacity to monitor that? And the other one, Chairperson, that I want to find out about the, the if they can they can unpack the lack of prevention of uh, unauthorized liquor, liquor expenditure and fruitless and fruitless expenditure because AXA has that challenge. If they can actually tell us what what consequences did they have in in place for 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 for, for dealing with, with 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 that. And the other one, Chairperson, is that one of the of the vacancy because there is some vacancy in, 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 in their in these entities. Do they have any plan to, to, to fill up those those vacancies? Thank you very much, Chairperson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mondi. Chairperson, Honorable Sabangu, note me please. 
Honorable Chabangu, I can understand that you have serious problems of network there. I said you are number two. Oh, it's your turn. Thank you. thank you, my brother. Yes, thank you. Chairperson, uh, thank you very much for the presentation, which was uh, well presented. I've got only a few questions. The first question being with regard to job creation. The Corona-19 convict is destroying a lot of work. That was meant to be the hope of the hopeless for the creation which was already suffering. How does the department intend to improve on, on this uh, to avoid joblessness? Two, it has been indicated that the airlines are, are unsustainable. How do they intend to revive them and bring back them back uh, to where they were? Or the intention is just to privatize them and hand it over to the palace so as they become rich while the poor of the poorest are suffering. My last question, Chairperson, with you is uh, COVID-19 recovery plans with regard to domestic flights, are you intending to put in place strict measures with regard to screening? Because if we can't do that, I can foresee danger with, with the regard to the uh, presentation. They even put diagrammatic Representation. Uh, 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 honorable member, there is only one chairperson in the meeting, please. Are you done, uh, Honorable uh, Makosini? Yes, with regard to the screening of the disease. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank, thank you. For protection. Thank you. Number three, Honorable Man. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, good afternoon, DM, Chairperson of the Board, and CEO. Chair, maybe let's congratulate the CEO for her appointment. The last time we met the entity, there was no CEO. Congratulations, uh, just, CEO. Just, just a moment. Uh, Honorable Makosini. Uh, members who are using their cell phones, as you move around uh, uh, in your cars, we can see you here on the screen, and it's not it's not uh, professional. So we urge members to remain in one place. Honorable Makosini, Honorable Makosini, we don't want to see the whole of Kwakwa there. We yes, want sir. to see you. Yeah, we don't want to see the whole of Kwakwa. We want to see you as you move because you are using your phone. We see a number. Hey, but now we don't have electricity. Yes. Because of electricity shortage, I'm moving yeah. from one place to another. Sorry okay. Thank you very much. Continue, Sorry. Honorable Member. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm still saying congratulations to the CEO of AXA, and we wish her well. Uh, she came in at a very challenging time. Um, Chair, the presentation is welcome. However, the age of the AXA is not covered in glory in terms of... In my microphone, Makosini. Honorable Makosini. And uh, mute your mic, microphone. Honorable uh, Yabo, we're not of the same age. We must be patient with other honorable members. Thank you very much. Continue, honorable member. Thank you, Chair. I was saying that AXA has not been covered in glory. While COVID might have its implications, I would like Chairperson and CEO to highlight to us what is being done in the 
previous year, 2018-19, there were material misstatements. You didn't do well in prevention of unauthorized expenditure and in terms of procurement and contract management. You had an increase of about 60.7 million rand in fruitless and wasteful expenditure. And if you see that those holds that were open there, if they remain open, the cry to get government guarantees might not be backed up by facts. Um, also, I would like to know what has been done by allegations that were not investigated, specifically in the 2017-2018 financial year. Last but not least, I would like to hear what is the status of your investment within the Guarulhos International Airport and the Mumbai Airports. Both of them might be suffering. What is the extent of the impact in terms of what has been put there? What are you cushioning yourself to do in that regard? Thank you, Chairperson. That's <clears throat> Honorable um, McDonald. Um, good afternoon, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, good afternoon, uh, Deputy Minister. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I will join the chorus. This was one of the better presentations that I've seen so far. And I can see that the entity is well prepared for the move to level three and there's a lot of plans in process however i would like to add my voice to uh, what honorable manchu has mentioned uh, gurulos airport in sao paulo was already uh, a huge loss to axa and with this COVID 19 uh, it's going to be in the billions um, what is the plans with the airport? Are we are we are we going to uh, invest more? Uh, what is the plans? Then, um, how is the the the, the COVID nineteen going to affect the expansions of Cape Town and uh, FAOR or Johannesburg, um, all of the Tambo Airport, which is in dire need of uh, Cape Town is in dire need of a second runway and Johannesburg is in dire need of uh, additional parking space for aircrafts. But with the if the spending is going to be stopped, are these are these uh, capital projects then going to be stopped? And they have already been started. What are we going to do with with what we've spent already? Um, then um, on on BE uh, um, access to the um, retail side of AXA airports. You know, when I go to Johannesburg, um, I always use those young men that uh, polish the shoes because I, I always like to give them some money. And I sit there and they've explained to me that it cost them 150 rand just to get in there. Then they still have to pay somebody whose business that is to, to work there. And at the end of the day, they make 100 rand. There must be a way that we can empower these young people to, especially these black young people, to also participate in the economy and to have to make some money out of this hard labor that they are doing. Um, I, I also in the presentation, I would like to also maybe get an, a, a better indication of how much money was spent uh, and is being planned to be spent in the black economic, uh, uh, specifically black owned businesses and black owned women businesses um, in, in the next financial years. Then on my last point, Chair, um, second last point, Chair, uh, can somebody please tell me what is the status of the legal uh, um, thing that's happening at the moment with Cape, Cape Medics that they've taken you to court and that, the, 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 that there's a, a possibility that the sheriff is going to attach uh, goods with you and then AXA must find a way to save jobs in any way that it can. We, the, the economy will not survive if we if we cannot save jobs. And I know it's very difficult. Um, we must find a way that AXA can retain its job uh, and maybe increase its. Now it's a good time to to 
to invest money into the South African economy. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Honorable McDonald. Honorable May. Thank you, Chairperson. Mr. McDonald asked half of my question, but I'll go on. One of the duties of the department is to develop airports. As a result of the recession and the COVID-19, South Africa's financial politicians position is in a very bad state. Like the rest of the world, we understand it. The aviation industry came to a standstill. Are they still going to extend the Oliver Tambo and Cape Town Airport in this financial year, seeing as they foresee that passenger traffic is expected to decline by 40% in 2020? And I can't see any improvement in the next few years. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Ramado. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Allow me to greet the Deputy Minister, the DG, Chairperson of Board, and the CEO, the Masiari. Chairperson, let me join my colleagues honorable members who are welcoming or appreciating the presentation. Most of the questions that I wanted to ask have been asked by my colleagues, but uh, nonetheless, let me take with the entity. During 2018-2019 financial year, there were issues that were raised by the AG. And can I check with the entity whether they have resolved it? Can they update us on those issues? That's my submission, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Ramadwa, Honorable Lansing. Thank you, Chair, and good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for the presentations uh, from the EXO officials, uh, also recognizing the presence of the Deputy Minister. Um, yes, it is rather uh, depressing circumstances, especially the finances, in particular with a company that I always maintained at great potential. And I still believe AXA has great potential and so many opportunities. Um, and I also understand that we are rather early in a very awkward financial uh, situation in terms of presenting detail on mitigation and adaptation measures, but I do find an imbalance in terms of what we were presented with in that there was very little on the mitigation and adaptation in terms of the business plan going forward. Yes, there was a lot said about what we'll do about um, uh, keeping people safe um, and all the different measures around sanitation and movement and so on, but I really expected a bit more on the financial side, and I'm sure we would get more detail around that because liquidity is absolutely important. The one thing that I never really understood about the bookkeeping of AXA is the claims of making profit um, on the one side and on the other side, um, the loans, which are outstanding. So um, surely, you know, there's a lot more to be said than what we um, got presented here today. In particular, um, I didn't see anything about uh, the revenue and non-aeronautical services because uh, in the best days, there was something like a 37% balance between um, this, and I expected a bit detail on that, which I didn't see. I would like to know specifically whether there's been any changes in the share holding on the Inverpar AXA um, share holding. Um, I noticed one slide which spoke about the technical advisory section that we have with Libya or Liberia, Zambia and Rwanda. Um, and I would like to get an indication whether these contracts are short term or whether they are on an ongoing basis. So what is the basis of those contracts? Um, then in terms of the Brazil um, Gorillos, um contract, which two of my colleagues also mentioned, this is a bid which we which we won in 2012. So we more or less 10 years into a concession plan, which when I can remember correctly was intended to 
go to 2032. So we more or less in the middle of that, but never ever have I seen a detailed presentation on that particular project, neither of the international airport project in Mumbai. And I think, Chair, it is high time that we really get a detailed presentation on that. We are 10 years in the contract, halfway, as I said, and I really think it is important. My last question is about um, a more operational, practical um, issue around the safekeeping and protection of seized material, seized alcohol at airports, um, and uh, how the management and security works around that. And I'm asking this in particular in light of an allegation that not too long ago, the Central Store 13 depot at the Central or Cape Town International Airport was raided and that the alcohol that was destined for destruction was actually stolen. Can you confirm and give detail on that, please? Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Honorable Ansinga. Must talk was unfinished. Honorable Mapena. Yes, Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, I think perhaps uh, I think a lot of the questions which I had, uh, also my colleagues have already covered. Um, I think uh, same for just one question. For, for instance, in recent years, uh, the department has spent, for instance, increasing amounts of money um, with regards to our legal fees. Now, how many cases are currently in the courts? Obviously, with COVID-19 currently, um, there isn't much that um, can go on. But also, in anticipation of the cost with regards to legal fees, how much um, are they anticipating that um, they're going to spend with regards to legal fees? And then also one other issue is when, <clears throat> when they start um, when we eventually reach um, level three, um, or at level three, I'm glad that the <coughs> the CO is touched on a plan um, to resume with domestic flights and and all of those. But in terms of anticipation of um, traffic numbers, because I see in the report it also mentions that there's going to be flights or domestic flights which are going to be uh, need to be authorized on a need. Uh, or on a case-to-case -case, uh, basis, um, depending <clears throat> on what is happening on that day. Um, do they envisage that this might perhaps significantly improve their cash flow or might uh, put them in a better financial position, uh, given that they have almost no access to international um, traffic um, volumes and flights? So that that is is essential my question but i think most of them have been covered but just lastly to say chair uh with 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 microsoft teams we are able to raise hands virtually if you look at the bottom there there's where it says uh, raise hand if you press that as you're hosting you should be able to see hands i, said, I raised it virtual and i see another one as well so so i think as you say we must be patient and we must also you know educate as you go along but you are able to do that and you can save some some period of time. Just check the number of hands that have been raised and then I'm sure we can move on. To the rest. Thank you. No, thank you for the education. But you, you must also uh, mute your phone as, as messages. <laughs> so that so that you are. Thank you very much. Um, Honorable Deputy Minister. And your team, Honorable Deputy DM. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, it's never late to be educated and be schooled, eh? These young yeah. ones are doing very well. That is uh, true. Without much ado, let me give to the Chairperson of the Board uh, and the CEO for responses. Do you you have about 15 minutes max. So other questions, uh, you can provide written responses uh, in five to seven days. Because I'm sure you'll not finish all of them. Those that you have touched, provide the responses 
uh, within five to seven days. Thank you. Oh, I'm muting. Thank, thank you very much, Chairperson, uh, and thanks for for that uh, suggestion. Um, because we have quite a number of these questions that have been asked here. We will divide the answers between uh, uh, the three of us, between myself, the, C the CEO and the CFO. Uh, questions relating to the state of readiness and capacity for unscreening and uh, the unpacking of the uh, consequences of uh, uh, unauthorized expenditures will be done by the CEO. The question relating to vacancies, Chairperson, I would like to point out that uh, when we came before you last year, uh, we had quite a number of vacancies, and I'm sure uh, Honorable Mangu commented on the on the fact that uh, uh, we we look like an, a, a company that is beset with acting, acting C CEO, acting uh, CFO, etc., etc. I'm pleased to say that, Chairperson, as we speak now, uh, we have a, a full-time CEO who has been appointed. We have a full-time CFO uh, who started only at the beginning of this month, and uh, there is just only one ex uh, uh, vacancy, at, 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 uh, actually two uh, vacancies at, uh, at, uh, at executive level. And uh, we hope to feel same, you know, as soon as, as, soon as possible. Um, then let me, let me give uh, the CEO and the CFO to to respond to to the other questions that have been posed, and and of course coming back to the to the issue of unauthorized uh, expenditures. Um, uh, last year we did indicate to you, Chairperson, that we will be embarking upon a process in terms of which we would then try to establish what was the root cause of these, uh, of these uh, unauthorized expenditures. We discovered, Chairperson, that many of them were in the area of supply chain. And, and it was for that reason, therefore, that we engaged in a process of strengthening the control processes within the supply chain and, uh, and also embarked on an intensive training of those who are responsible for, uh, for tender adjudication. The details of this root cause analysis will be given by the CFO. Uh, I thank you, Chairperson, and the CEO will respond to the, to the other question. <clears throat> thank you, CEO. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members for the Unmute, unmute. Wow. Hello. 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 Chairperson, my apologies. You. There's a problem on my side. Okay. okay. We can hear you clearly. Okay. So if I could just respond very quickly, but I'll take guidance from your side, Chairperson, uh, and suggest that some of the more substantive issues I would suggest of the Brazil, India detailed presentations, we would like to come back to you on and give you a detailed presentations of those, except to indicate that uh, the CFO can just touch on, on where we are currently, but we, we believe that's an important area for us to come back to you with a detailed presentation on. Um, let me start with the issue related to um, safety of passengers. Basically, Chairperson, the mandatory uh, wearing of, of masks is uh, regulated by the country and everybody is expected to do so. 
we have enough stock in AXA, but we would really set up mechanisms which enable passengers to also buy their own masks as they uh, embark on, 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 a, on a journey, principally because we would not be able to supply every single passenger that comes through ourselves. We would rely on people to provide, but we would have some in case uh, of emergency, and that basically so that we don't uh, uh, worsen the situation in terms of our budget spending on, on mass. What we have in stock, we manage and will be able to provide. The other suggestion we're making is for the chemists definitely to be opened and supplying those. The other issue about screening, Chepersin, the screening includes uh, temperature testing, and if somebody is detected to be referred to the Department of Health, Port Health authorities for further testing, and if that is they are found to be positive, chairperson, they would need to. They would. My apologies. They would need to be referred for uh, quarantining. And those are the arrangements we have in place in collaboration with the Port Health uh, authorities. We have established chairperson to deal with the outcomes of the Auditor General's report 2018-2019 and all other legacy matters. An audit steering committee, which is chaired by myself, that principally aims to deal with all the audit findings contained in the management letter and the Auditor General's report. So we commit, that audit steering committee is already operational. Our job is to ensure matters are referred to, to National Treasury for condonation, do consequent management for those who are found to be responsible for negative findings, eliminate the findings throughout, including the matters that members refer to of the irregular expenditure, which were currently is under investigation in detail, the irregular expenditure matters that were brought to the committee previously. We have, in addition to recommending consequent management, Chairperson, very specifically made recommendations, and it has been approved, to link audit findings to the performance management of officials. And that basically means on their KPIs and the contracts they will be signing, the audit findings will be measured in terms of their performance and linked to them individually. As a result, we have also then reviewed our delegation of authority framework in order to ensure that direct accountability with people that are responsible for those specific audit findings. The chairperson has already indicated the measure in SCM and would like to confirm that the bulk of the issues are in the supply chain management environment. When they have been dealt with, would have dealt largely with most of the matters that are in the Auditor General's report. Matters are currently under investigation and several of the matters are currently under investigation with our internal audit and our forensic audits and we are awaiting the results of those forensic reports and to take consequent management actions and disciplinary measures against officials that uh, are held responsible. Can I also indicate, though, Chairperson, is that there have been a number of people who have left the organization, uh, let's say, from about six months ago, and what we are finding in a lot of instances is people who have left the organization are linked a lot to most of the findings that we have. So there have been resignations, uh, a lot of resignations in areas where people are, are likely to be linked to the findings as the investigations show us at this particular point. Similarly, consequent management would be taken against people who have a fruitless and wasteful expenditure um, and very specific disciplinary measures taken uh, with respect to them. That audit steering committee chair is dealing with all of those matters, item by item, root cause, and person responsible and uh, responsible action that is to be taken against them. If I may finally indicate the issue related to um, mitigation and adaptation from Honorable Member 
Hans Singer, if we can just indicate there that we're currently, as we speak now, reviewing our business strategy. We would be able to come back to the committee once that has been concluded. But in that business strategy, we are clarifying the path post-COVID that basically highlights what measures we're taking in terms of uh, mitigation measures and adaptation measures in the post-COVID environment. One of the important parts of that strategy is to actually uh, diversify our revenue streams because COVID has shown us that our reliance on passenger revenues is something that is going to be risky in the future. We are expecting our air traffic movements to increase slightly uh, in this year, but largely the business strategy would be is done on the basis of our estimation of return of air traffic movements for the balance of the year. The CFO has already indicated in total will be at 50%, but we are doing projections on what we expect month on month, including starting in June with the domestic travel that is going to be allowed by the level three. I must indicate that the specifics of the level three from our side is really just a proposal at this stage, Chairperson, the Department of Transport in its regulations would finalize very specifically what level three looks like for all of us in the aviation industry. And CAA would help with the regulatory framework that finalizes and manages the specifics of level three. Um, the issue about shareholding, Chairperson, nothing has changed in our shareholding environment. We remain with the current shareholder arrangements. Um, and importantly, we would come back when we deal with uh, Guru and Mial in Brazil and India, together with the other contracts on the continent, the, the uh, contracts that are basically about providing advisory services, and I would suggest that we deal with all of them in that presentation when we come back. Um, I don't know if I've answered, I think I've answered most of the questions, Chairperson. There's just a couple that the CFO will deal with on financial matters. Thank you. <clears throat> Let me take this opportunity uh, through you, Chair and DM, that all the questions that have not been answered up until now, can we answer them in writing and uh, do that by Friday at least? Because of time constraints, I, I'm sure we'll all understand that. Uh, Otherwise, we'd have loved to hear the voice of the CFO, but time is not on our side. Let me just make just two observations. The first observation is that you, the entity is doing well, DM, I must say. Um, If, if it was before COVID-19 as they have presented, I think we should uh, say this is one entity that is a good example in the country of entities that we normally talk about. We need to promote and talk about, as we go, go forward, talk about this entity. And some of the entities that are doing well, Chairperson and your team, um, I'm sure this COVID-19 will pass. Just deal with um, um, issues that members have raised, issues like your fruitless expenditure, over expenditure. I'm sure we'll be able to come back and check on those issues. The other issue is this issue of um, the decision um, that may be taken that uh, uh, eating in the in the plane is a bit risky for the staff, the crew there. And uh, I I we are happy to hear that shops will be open. Uh, but I hear the CFO uh, CEO saying they will only be open for a takeaway. Now I was asking myself, if you open shops in at the airport. Uh, for a takeaway, where do you, where do you say these people must eat? Because they can't they can't eat in the plane, and they are already on board. 
they are already in the airport. I think it makes it will make more sense that why when people have all been checked, screened, and so forth, we must allow a social distance at the airport for those people who have bought food to to eat their food there. Otherwise, uh, where would these people eat their food? Um, I think it it is the same as saying you are only opening fast food for Uber Eats. We don't have Uber Eats deep in Polokwane, deep in Eastern Cape, where there is fast food next to the shop right, uh, where there is fast food next to uh, the pick and pay. It, it, it makes sense that when we do our decision, make our decisions as government, we should also think for people out there in the outskirts of the country where you don't have all these downloads and so forth and so on. Um, deal also with the issue of security at the airports. We were told that most of the security companies at the airport are not our own security. And that poses a risk in terms of the security of the country. Those are the issues I wanted to make input on. Otherwise, DM, um, on this entity, I think uh, we should, uh, I should agree with most of the members who said they presented them very well. Thank you very much. Uh, you can now go back and, and prepare more for level three. We're happy. Uh, so this session with access closed. Thank you very much. Thank you, DM. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you, Chef. Thank you. Can we now move to the second uh, entity? Saka. Are they are they are they with us? Uh, over to you, DM, and um, do give to them directly. I will come back at 10 past, requesting my slot. So we give them up to 10 past. They must also do like AXA, deal with, summarize the important uh, issues they want to highlight. The rest, uh, the committee has read your presentation before time. Over to you, DM. And uh, uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, just like what I said with uh, Airports Company, uh, Saka is uh, also within the same space where one can be able to shower accolades, but also mindful of the fact that uh, the new normal has crept into the avi aviation industry and uh, highly challenged, I would say. Uh, but uh, for the past, we would say that uh, uh, ATNS, SACA, and AXA have been able to be self sufficient. But with the advent of uh, COVID 19, they they, they are highly challenged. Uh, let me just indicate that uh, for, for us uh, in the department, what becomes very critical is how do we move to a higher level post COVID-19? What are the economic spin-offs and the economic creativity and innovation that we can be able to look at, which will be able to assist uh, as we, we are moving uh, forward because the new normal uh, expect of us that we should uh, look at things not within the rose colored glasses, but look at things uh, with our naked eyes and say, how do we deal with unemployment? How we, do we deal with uh, joblessness and poverty that is besieging our country? But also, how we do we deal uh, with social cohesion uh, within the framework and within the ambit of where we are operational. And we believe that uh, 
uh, airport uh, 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 civil aviation uh, together with airports company challenge as they are they are up to the task they can be able to uh, make sure that talking to the issues of uh, uh, the economy and revitalizing the economy of the republic and making sure that we work within the African space of making uh, the, the African skies uh, to be the best uh, in terms of aviation are the mantra that we are living uh, and uh, ideologically uh, making sure that uh, within the tra transport industry, we, we work towards uh, uh, realizing the ideal of the safe African skies, the ideals of in, uh, working with other African countries and uh, uh, working with the world uh, as we are highly challenged, it has, has already been spoken to by the airports company. I am going to request the chairperson of uh, uh, civil aviation uh, 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 to talk to a few issues and then introduce uh, uh, the CEO of the civil aviation. Thank you very much, Chairperson. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Honorable Dean. Chair? Salisla. Uh, Mr. Kosa and, and Mrs. Kosa. Uh, Mr. Kosa is the chairperson of the uh, uh, the board of uh, civil aviation, and Mrs. Kosa is the administrator in civil aviation. Thank you. Yeah, no, I know this. The two, they are not even related. It's the same thing. <clears throat> Ms. Kosa, are you there, sir? Um, thank you, um, Honourable Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee. Our Chairman is um, had joined, so I'm not sure whether he is um, still with us, um, or maybe the, he got cut off somehow. Let's see. Um, thank you very much. You can continue. Leave the Chairperson. We, he'll get used to this. Uh, New way of <laughs> things. The, I the see he's back on the screen, Chair. Okay, let's hear from him. Um, then uh, we listen to the presentation. Thank you, Chair. Chairperson, you're on mute. Yeah, no. The new chairperson of the board, you are on mute. Unmute chair. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Let's see your face. Thank yes, you very my much. Face. Uh, yes, my face, honorable chair. Thank you so much for, for the opportunity to make this presentation. Uh, thank you so much, chair and the committee. Uh, to the Deputy Minister, the Director General, and the officials from the department. Thank you so much. Um, every time we've got an opportunity to come make a presentation to you, uh, Chair and the committee, we come very cheerful and very bubbly. It is not the situation today uh, because of the challenges that the DM has already alluded to. And if I may say this uh, very briefly, Chair, to a very great extent, um, aviation is the source of the problem we're facing today. And the irony is that it's also among the sectors that are hardest hit. So we come here uh, in a different context. And as the DM has uh, alluded earlier on, we come here in the middle of um, a battle to um, to find our glory, which won't be which won't be very easy. And this is because our financial health and our sustainability 
chairperson and members of the committee depends on the health of the industry. It also depends on traffic volumes. So we, we, we come here uh, hoping to share not so very good news with you, uh, but we're looking forward to your inputs and to your guidance as usual. Uh, Chair, I haven't uh, come here alone. Uh, I came here with um, our full team representing both the board and management. Uh, from the board, uh, I have been joined by the lead independent uh, and member of the board, Professor Diane Mago, who is here. I can see she's raising her hand. Uh, and from management, we have got a DCA, uh, the company secretary, uh, 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 Ms. Nivashne Narendit. We have uh, the acting CFO, Andres van uh, Fieren. The CFO was supposed to join us, but he had a medical emergency and he couldn't. We were also joined by uh, uh, Ms. Pindi Gwebu, who is uh, the executive for corporate, uh, corporate services. The presentation, the main presentation, uh, Honorable Chair, will be done by the Director of Civil Aviation, uh, uh, Mayor Popi Koza. I will right away hand over to her. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, over to you, Mayor. Hello. Uh, apologies, Chair. Uh, I think I mistakenly um, uh, pressed mute. Um, <laughs> Oh gosh, I thought I thought I was techno savvy. I apologize. <laughs> uh, so I was saying thank you to the chairperson of the board, um, and greetings to the chairperson of the portfolio committee, the members of the portfolio committee, the deputy minister of transport DG and DDG, as well as the chairperson of Airports Company South Africa and the CEO. The presentation, as the chair has indicated, uh, will be shared by myself together with um, the management team. Uh, and we shall uh, uh, continue. So the, uh, the presentation outline, uh, next slide. <clears throat> Mepo, next slide, Pindi. Uh, the administration must give me permission, ma'am, because I can't move the slides. I'm not sure why. Um, okay. So the, the presentation, I will not necessarily go through the presentation outline, safe to say it will be presenting on the five-year strategic plan as well as the uh, annual performance plan. Uh, we'll touch on the finances, um, the impact of the COVID-19, our state of readiness in terms of um, lo lockdown level three, and we'll share briefly the key strategic challenges and, and the mitigation plans. So the purpose uh, of our presentation is to provide uh, the PCOT with a high-level um, strategic plan, as I've indicated, and will also be uh, dealing with the COVID-19 issues. Uh, without necessarily going through the mandate of the Civil Aviation Authority, I believe um, we, we all know uh, uh, by now, but uh, technically it is to regulate civil aviation industry uh, in the country uh, to ensure that um, safety and security is complied with, uh, but taking into account the international uh, requirements as well as the, the local context. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we draw our mandate uh, from the International Civil Aviation Organization, which gets translated 
uh, through the Civil Aviation Act by um, the Department of, of Transport and, and Parliament, uh, and that gives us a, 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 our mandate, uh, as it were. Um, maybe just to share uh, in terms of the CAA at a glance, this is how we are structured. Uh, Chair, I won't go through the structure again. Safe to say we're a public entity that reports to the Department of Transport. Uh, we have um, the, the accounting authority, which is the board of directors, um, with myself as the director of civil aviation or CEO, and I'm supported by a team of executives. But we also have uh, some uh, functions um, which uh, uh, have independent mandates, and that relates to the aircraft uh, and incident uh, investigation, as well as the flight uh, inspection unit. Um, a snapshot uh, in terms of the SACAS staff numbers. Um, we closed the financial year with about uh, 40 uh, vacancies, uh, unfortunately, and that is because to a um, high attrition rate uh, in, in the Civil Aviation Authority, we compete uh, a lot uh, with the industry for uh, scarce and, and very uh, technical uh, resources. Um, with respect to how SACA is, is transformed in terms of race, 86% uh, of employees are black, and, and of course that will include Indian uh, and uh, colored and, and African uh, groups, uh, and 14% and will be um, uh, white. With respect to, to gender, 49% uh, um, female uh, employees and 51% uh, male employees. With respect to uh, industry transformation, uh, of course, as we did share with the committee uh, previously, uh, industry transformation remains um, a, a challenge uh, in that uh, from personnel uh, technical licenses, uh, we still see a lot uh, of, of bulk of, of license holders being, being white, and then the spread uh, between African um, colored and Indian uh, sitting um, just, be, just at, at around uh, 10, 11 percent. Uh, with respect to the state, um, uh, the African, sorry, with respect to the aircraft uh, register statistics, we are seeing a, a growth uh, in terms of the aircraft registered as at the end of the financial year. So this has been a, a growing industry, but of course with the um, COVID-19 outbreak, uh, this is going to affect um, uh, our aircraft register. With respect to the state of aviation safety, we still maintain a very good record uh, in terms of fatal accidents in, in commercial scheduled sector or airline environment, uh, in that uh, for the past, I would say, 30 years, we haven't suffered a fatal accident uh, on the African soil, and this is a record that we intend uh, to keep in the years to come. But with respect to general aviation, this is where we, we then begin to see um, a quite an, a, 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 a high number of, of aircraft accidents um, and there are plans in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, we, we reduce uh, accidents uh, in, in this area. In 2020, at the end of the financial year, uh, we recorded uh, about 98 uh, aircraft uh, accidents. And if we compare this period uh, to um, the same period in, in, in 2019, they, there is an increase of about uh, 12 accidents. Uh, with respect to cumulative uh, aircraft um, uh, accident, the fatalities, we, we did see a, a drop, a 13 percent uh, decrease. Um, and um, uh, although it is quite pleasing that uh, fatalities were reduced, we are still concerned about uh, the, the accidents um, in, in general aviation, which is more private um, flying. When we do a comparison over a, a five-year trend, um, we've seen a 10% reduction uh, if we compare 2019-2020 financial year to 2015-2016. Um, but then we also see that uh, in 2018-2019, we had 86 accidents, which increased um, to 98 in 2019-2020. There is a general aviation strategy that has been approved in terms of, um, uh, in terms of implementation in this financial year uh, to reduce accidents in the general aviation area. Our core ideology, which is the vision uh, in terms of the new um, strategy, five-year strategy, we want to be a world-class civil aviation regulator, and our mission is to regulate civil aviation safety and security in support of the sustainable development of the aviation industry, 
and our brand promise hasn't changed and that is keeping you safe in the sky. We do have the set uh, of values, um, which is integrity, teamwork, service excellence, and, and collaboration. So we've maintained some of the values um, uh, that we, from what we had in the past five years. Uh, I will now hand over to uh, Ms. Pindiwe Kwebu to take us through um, the, the presentation. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, DCA, and uh, thank you, Chairperson. I, I am going to just briefly outline um, the process that the organization took in developing the five-year strategy. And in this regard, we are here talking about the alignment that we have drawn from uh, as, the, as the regulator in terms of what uh, the government aims for the next five years. And as a result, we have looked at the apex priorities as, as announced by the president in 2019 during the SONA speech. And we have equally looked at the Department of Transport outcomes, which were also um, uh, which are also aligned to the uh, apex priorities from government. Uh, the CAA outcomes, uh, as they are outlined there, we've come to a... a to about six outcomes, which speaks uh, mostly to the uh, mandate of the Civil Aviation Authority. The first outcome there, talking to strengthened effectiveness of the Civil Aviation Safety and Security Regulatory Oversight, uh, is basically one of our main uh, outcomes that we are going to be working on in the next five years. And financial sustainability, enhanced human capital management, innovation and technology management, as well as improved stakeholder engagement and sustained good governance are also some of uh, the secondary outcomes that we are going to be concentrating on. Uh, this next slide just uh, simply uh, demonstrates uh, to the members, to the committee, the alignment that was drawn between the APEX priorities as well as the DOT outcomes against the CAA outcomes. I'm not going to go through them one by one. Um, in terms of uh, how a government is going to measure whether the CAA has achieved its objectives uh, for the next five years, uh, the organization uh, has come to uh, develop the income, the, sorry, the impact statement, which is a safe, secure, efficient, and sustainable civil aviation regulation that contributes to, to socioeconomic growth. And I'm now going to go also through a process where, as a, uh, an entity, we've gone uh, and looked at what we have achieved in the past five years and what it is that we want to achieve in the next five years. And from that, we have basically um, outlined uh, against the backdrop of the six strategic outcomes uh, what it is uh, that we want to identify as an indicator that we have achieved these six, out these six outcomes at the end of the five-year period. And in doing so, we've also outlined the base from where we are moving from and also indicated what would be uh, the indicator at the end of the five years um, if we want to measure whether we have achieved on this strategy or not. So in terms of the first strategic um, outcome, which speaks to the strength and safety and security oversight system, uh, you'll see that one some of the uh, indicators that we have highlighted here are, ex are the number of accidents, both uh, in the commercial sector as well as the general aviation sector. It is how we are performing and perceived and performing against international standards and also some of the issues that bring in uh, the new technology of drones or APES as we would officially call them and uh, as well as how we are performing as a state against the um, critical elements on safety and security oversight um, uh, in terms of our international obligations. And the next um, uh, outcomes program rather speaks to, to our financial management. And here we are um, looking at how we want to increase our revenue collection uh, as well as also reducing our operating costs as well. And one of the uh, new items that, has, uh, that we are highlighting in the strategic document is really the performance of the flight inspection unit as well. The target on human capital, uh, we are looking here at how we are going to uh, ensure that as an entity, we do have a, a good succession plan that's going to make sure that we do have, a, a, a currently, we have a one-to-one -one ratio when it comes to critical scarcity. What we mean by that is that 
uh, for every one critical skill, we have one person that is um, in the succession plan, and we want to increase that number to, so that we don't have to suffer a lot of losses from a cap human capital perspective. But we also go into details in terms of how we want to improve our skills so that we are able to deliver uh, within uh, the four, uh, fourth industrial revolution space, as well as how well we want to engage um, our employees. We're also looking uh, from a transformation perspective, measuring our performance against uh, engaging women, youth and people living with, with disabilities. And lastly, we also want to engage into a pro new program where we are actually defining our productivity index so that we can know that we are moving, um, uh, we are able to measure whether we are improving as an entity or not. Uh, the program on innovation and technology, basically we want to look at um, the uh, business process redesign uh, because we have not defined that baseline. We are saying that we want at the end of five years to have fully uh, redesigned our processes so that we are a slick uh, organization that delivers on time and uh, that that basically ensures that we have got happy customers. Uh, in terms of stakeholder management, um, we want to also establish a customer satisfaction industry. In the past five years, we've implemented and introduced a lot of systems where we're going to make sure that our we are able to measure our customer satisfaction. And to that end, we've developed service level agreements that we agreed with industry and now we are able to 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 measure on an ongoing basis how we're doing as far as that is concerned and we want at the end of the of the five year period to be able to reach a target of 75% in terms of the customer satisfaction in, index we as a flagship uh, regulator in the region within the region the CAA has prided itself over the years by assisting um, our neighboring countries in terms of their compliance, uh, both at an ICAO safety and security level, but also with regards to safety standards uh, within the continent. And in this regard, we're saying that we want to improve on that. We want to help even more countries uh, um, to be able to, to, to increase the safety index of Africa from a civil aviation activity point of view. And also we have um, done a tremendous work in terms of infiltrating, especially our rural areas uh, from a point of view of um, creating our awareness and but also uh, bringing to the fore the opportunities that civil aviation can bring uh, to previously disadvantaged learners and communities. And so we're saying that our target uh, previously has been 40,000 learners uh, per year, and now we are saying we're going to increase that to about 60,000 learners a year by the end of the five-year period. And then also from a socio-economic development perspective, we want to increase the number of our sustainable projects where we're able to measure uh, the impact of our socio-economic development projects over a number of years. We want to increase those to about three. Currently, we have got two, and this excludes really the ad hoc projects that we do with communities. And um, lastly, uh, the, the last program uh, speaks to governance. And in terms of the governance uh, program, we're saying that as a CAA, the CAA has managed to achieve an unqualified audit ever since it was established. And um, for about six years in a row, the CAA was able to obtain a clean audit and as a result also was awarded um, recognition by the Auditor General. And what we're saying that we want to keep on this tra trajectory as, as an entity and therefore we want to ensure that from a PFMA perspective uh, we do better than we've done in the previous years. And, um, and also from an achievement of our annual performance plan, we have to date achieved 100% against our APP for six years in a row, with, with, where the last one is still is yet to be confirmed by the, the Auditor General in their current year and audit that they are conducting. I'm going to um, quickly move uh, to the detail in terms of what is our five-year plans, and I'm not going to concentrate particularly on the four outer years, uh, and I'm just going to uh, 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 limit myself to the 2020-21, and this is also going to inform the next couple of slides when we talk about the quarterly targets. Uh, in terms of the first outcome, uh, what we have um, uh, included in our strategy is that we want to develop Hello. an industry. I would, wish yes, you to, I would wish to go to a summary. Okay. As I've said, uh, members have read this. Okay. Uh, due to time constraints, we, we don't have the luxury of time. Okay. Thank I you. think DCA. 
DCA will will probably indicate uh, to which slide should I go to COVID, ma'am? Uh, I think let's go to the finances. Um, okay. The the MTF, uh, and then we'll we'll take the COVID nineteen. Thank, thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, Andres, Andres. Uh, thank you, DCA Chair. Um, uh, we want to present you with uh, the MTF budget uh, that we presented to, to our board and Department of Transport, but we've got to stress that was before COVID-19. Um, it was started in around about uh, June, July last year and updated around about November. Um, if you look at the, the figures to, to note, 2018-19, we had revenue of 704 million rand and um, a surplus deficit of or a surplus of 1.4 um, million rand for the year. For the 2019-20 um, financial year, we um, forecasted revenue of 760 million rand, uh, which was 8% up from 2018-19 actual. And uh, we forecasted expenses of 780 million rand, that was 11% up due to uh, an increase in repairs and maintenance expenses and uh, some software expenses that we did. We then budgeted for the 2020-21 financial year, another increase of 8% um, on the revenue. And uh, that was driven by uh, inflationary increase on passenger safety charge that has already been promulgated, as well as uh, then forecasted 2.5% growth in passenger numbers which unfortunately, unfortunately now seems unrealistic. To mention there is that 93% um, of our revenue is generated on a, a user, fee, um, user pay principle, of which 76% of our revenue is generated from passenger safety charge, which is totally dependent on the, the number of uh, passengers that is flying. On our expense base, we estimate that 80 to 85% of our expenses uh, is basically fixed cost that is difficult to, to change. 74% uh, of our um, expenses is uh, staff related cost, while 26% of our expenses is uh, non staff related costs. Um, I think that's it for this slide. Next slide, please. Um, on the financial position, we can just uh, say that pre-COVID-19, uh, SACA is in a good financial position. We've um, we forecast uh, E&E for March 21 column. We've got total assets of uh, 585 million rand, um, bank balances of um, roughly about 250 million rand that we're forecasting, and accumulated reserves um, for the current year forecast 315 million for uh, the budget 300 million. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, DCA. Um, thank you, thank you, Andres. Um, Chair, then we'll go through the in summary uh, the COVID-19, uh, the our in, internal as well as the industry response uh, plans. Without necessarily going through the background, I think the CEO of AXA did touch on the issues that um, we've seen the diminished uh, active aviation activity um, uh, in our sector, and that was due to uh, the lockdown. And we are very optimistic that perhaps uh, in level three, we'll be able to migrate uh, towards a limited uh, domestic uh, activity as, 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 as it will be announced uh, by government. Uh, the implications, as the Deputy Minister had indicated, as well as the Chairman of the Board, um, had that been that one, our annual performance plan are going to be imp impacted uh, negatively because we will not be able to uh, um, um, achieve uh, all of them. Uh, to that end, we are busy revising and reprioritizing uh, our annual performance plan, which then shall be submitted uh, to the Department of, 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 of Transport uh, the, or the Executive Authority for approval uh, after the board process, uh, which is in, now in May. From a financial point of view, of course, uh, without any revenue um, of, of which uh, our existence uh, or our financial sustainability is derived from the revenue we generate from the industry activity, uh, for the months uh, of April uh, as well as May, we will derive no revenue. However, in our assessment based on the cash reserves that we had built over the years, we project that we will survive for about seven months. 
uh, if uh, lockdown continues, but if uh, lockdown uh, or the restrictions are uplifted, we should be able to generate uh, some, some, some revenue. Uh, of course, um, in terms of the core mandate, uh, we, 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 do, um, uh, we are impacted in that we can't fully uh, execute our, our regulatory um, uh, processes, uh, but plans are food uh, chairperson in terms of ensuring that as soon as we reopen, we will be able to, to continue uh, accordingly. Uh, we've had to uh, um, uh, postpone major events, uh, as well as the two major uh, audits um, by the International Civil Aviation Organization for both aviation safety and security, and we project that those will happen uh, in, uh, in, in the next uh, financial year. So we've implemented internal measures in terms of um, in, ensuring that we do have a, a, an internal response team who looks after COVID-19. We've developed our HR guidelines. We're in the process of finalizing the policy. Um, we have uh, done education and awareness uh, uh, um, campaign. Uh, we've procured uh, sufficient hygienic uh, protective um, um, personal uh, protective uh, equipment. Uh, and we are observing uh, social distancing. We, we've done um, so. Our organization is COVID-19 ready, uh, so to speak. We are able to work remotely through uh, uh, virtual pl platforms, uh, and we are continuing uh, to work uh, as a, an, um, an entity that has been designated as, a, as an essential service because we do have limited aviation activity. So we, we've got to continue uh, working, but we are heavily reliant. Uh, on, on virtual uh, platforms. Uh, in terms of the industry readiness, after the minister had promulgated regulations and directions, we did issue uh, guidelines uh, to guide the, the industry uh, in terms of how they operationalize uh, the regulations and directions. We've issued guidelines, uh, a number of guidelines, uh, to give direction to the industry how to do repatriation flights, how to disinfect uh, aircraft, uh, the airlines, um, and, and so on. And we've been issuing uh, exemptions, particularly with respect to aviation personnel um, licenses, which we've given uh, an extension uh, up to the end of June. Um, and we will, uh, of course, um, uh, be guided by when level three uh, uh, kicks in and we'll be able to adjust uh, uh, those exemptions uh, accordingly. Next slide. Um, again, we did offer training to, to the industry. More than 5,000 industry staff members were trained on COVID-19 prevention management through our aviation medicine uh, department, and we continue uh, to engage with the industry and to guide accordingly in terms of ensuring that uh, the measures are implemented uh, accordingly. Next slide. Uh, Chairperson, I'll give the acting CFO just to touch high level on financial impact uh, scenarios. Um, as we had indicated that we are negatively uh, impacted uh, financially. So these are the scenarios, the three scenarios that uh, we, we have uh, developed uh, under the guidance of the board. Uh, and uh, these are the scenarios that they keep changing uh, on an ongoing basis. As uh, acting CFO. Uh, thank you, DCA. Uh, Chairperson, uh, yeah, we prepared these three scenarios. And uh, like DCA said, uh, they will drastically change as government relax the lockdown regulations on the risk-based approach. Uh, the first scenario we said is our worst case scenario and in the slides below it's indicated as red. Um, it indicates a lockdown and no revenue being generated uh, for limited revenue from fuel levy related to cargo movements. And this scenario, SACO will only have sufficient cash reserves to sustain itself for approximately seven months before we have to take Hello. Andrew, are you there? Andres uh, is not with us currently. Okay, I can continue, Chair. Yes. <laughs> so these scenarios, they typically give us um, at the focus to how we're going to be impacted. As I did indicate, maybe let's go to the previous slide, Pindi. As I did indicate, uh, Chairperson, worst case scenario, lockdown and no revenue generated except for limited revenue. Uh, in this scenario, we can have sufficient cash uh, to exist for about seven months where we'll be able to pay salaries 
as well as the upkeep uh, of, of, uh, of, of the regulatory authority. Scenario two is a pessim pessimistic scenario. If the lockdown lasts for seven months and that there's a drop uh, of about 84% uh, in, in passenger numbers, uh, we may be able to exist for approximately nine months uh, before we, we, we approach the government for assistance. And scenario three is the optimistic one, that is if level three uh, comes into effect. But of course, we project that uh, the drop in passenger numbers could be about 50, 77%. And we believe that uh, we would be able to survive for, for, for the next uh, 10 months. Um, uh, so the, these are high level scenarios that uh, we have come up with, uh, Che, to say under this scenario, if this happens, uh, how, how will we uh, financially su sustain ourselves? As the, as the authority. Next slide. Uh, let's go to the next one. So the mitigation strategies um, uh, in place, uh, uh, Chairperson, is that firstly, we've had to review our contracts that may impact uh, the organization favorably, for instance, the issues of rental payment, where we have um, engaged uh, the landlords uh, for a payment holiday. Um, we've deferred our capital expenditure uh, for about 12 months. Um, uh, travel costs uh, overseas and local travel, of course, uh, they've been deferred. Uh, major public relations events, uh, they are all, all on, on hold. Uh, and typically, we are only uh, expanding on um, issues such as um, uh, personnel, protective uh, clothing, and, and majority of, of the things that we would ordinarily do uh, from an HR point of view, including uh, training, recruitment, um, giving bursaries uh, to de deserving students uh, for scarce and critical skills, all those um, will be on hold until such time that you, you, you go back uh, to some level of no normality. Chairperson, we had done a risk analysis uh, and, and mitigation strategies. I won't necessarily go through this slide again, save to say we, we have tried to be on top of our game to understand the risks as well as to come up with mitigation strategies in terms of how we deal with the issues of, of COVID-19. Next slide. Uh, our, the stage of readiness uh, for, for level three, uh, as I had indicated earlier, Chair, we are an essential service provider, and, and therefore we are able to provide uh, oversight uh, over the entire industry uh, through um, um, uh, means that I, I indicated uh, earlier on. Uh, of course, um, we've had to comply with all COVID-19 regulations and directions as published by different uh, ministers. Um, we have limited physical inspections at, across the country because of um, uh, interprovincial travel restrictions, but we are able to um, 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 use ICT platforms to exchange documents and verify certain uh, applications and, and so on. Uh, examinations um, for pilots, uh, for aircraft maintenance engineers uh, and so on have been um, uh, put on hold. Uh, because the students ordinarily would require to travel um, from interprovincially as well as um, from uh, uh, um, uh, their places of residence or, or training schools uh, to SACA. And based on the current uh, uh, regulations, that is not permitted. Uh, as soon as we open again, we'll be able to, to continue with the examinations. Um, with the opening, of course, the looming opening uh, of um, domestic travel under level three, we will be able to provide all regulatory services with immediate, immediate effect. We do have recovery plans in place. Um, we, we will be able to uh, conduct a new and, and renewal uh, applications, particularly to ensure that our pilots, um, the cabin crew, uh, uh, the maintenance engineers, uh, the screeners and so on uh, remain uh, um, um, uh, competent uh, and, and current uh, in terms of, of their licenses. Um, we will uh, conduct uh, limited uh, examination sessions uh, and we'll be able to, to carry on, you know, with our um, uh, regulatory oversight, albeit at, at um, a very uh, low, um, uh, low base. Uh, we have convened a uh, chairperson uh, an industry meeting uh, to prepare for, for level three, AXA, ATNS, they, they were part of, of the meeting, including the entire industry, to agree on the measures that uh, will be uh, acceptable. I must indicate that uh, that submission is due to the department uh, before the end of this week. 
uh, to clearly outline the, the standard operating uh, procedures, uh, as well as to, um, um, to ensure that uh, we're fully compliant uh, with the COVID-19 regulations uh, from COCTA, uh, from uh, the DTIC, um, uh, as well as uh, our, our Department uh, of Transport. Uh, we do know that cargo operations are fully operational, so at least that, that part is going well. We will be, uh, we are in the process uh, of ensuring that we calibrate uh, all instrument landing systems at all airports, uh, given the fact that we had uh, the aircraft accident in January. So there was a delay in terms of uh, calibrating the instrument landing systems. We, we are making progress with the department and we are hopeful that in, a, in, a, in two weeks time or so, we'll be able to, to continue um, uh, with, with, with this calibration uh, mission. So in terms of the state of readiness uh, for level three, I can confidently say, uh, Chairperson, that um, we, we will be able to provide the regulatory oversight uh, as required, uh, including um, with, with the industry. Uh, I'll skip the slide, go straight to the, some of the key strategic uh, challenges and, and mitigation plans, Chair. Uh, some of them we had uh, presented uh, previously, so I will, I will except for COVID-19, uh, which is uh, affecting us as an organization, um, I think I will I will stop it uh, at here, Chairperson. Thank you very much, um, Nekosa. Um, and, and everybody, <clears throat> can we get to members? Um, yeah. Members, yeah. those who want to pose some questions. Honorable Stoller. Uh, Honorable Stoller. Honorable Stoller. Honorable McDonald. Uploaded to you. And then Honorable McDonald. Honorable Shabangu. Honorable Shabangu. Yes, sir. Lisa Wakamadu. Lisa Wakamadu. And then. Chris Utsinger. Chris Utsinger. Chris Hansinger, Honorable. And then. Thank you, Che. Mapena, Mapeno, Honorable Mapeno, yes. Honorable Ramadwa. Honorable Ramadwa, yes. Come again. Oh, Honorable May, okay. Honorable members, let's. Allow let let me request uh, you to apply a two minutes rule. Please. Let's start with Honorable Stolle. Hi, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and the uh, and the presentation. Chairperson, my my first of, first one is that one of the industry transformation. Chairperson, I don't see any progress on the, the on the transformation because when, when you check Chairperson, you find that most of 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 of, of members who, 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 who are too qualified and have some privileges are white. If you check the total pilots, the Africans are 1,279, and Canada is 257. And white is 10,855, and Indian is 337 chairperson. It is a worrying factor because I don't know what kind of, 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 of application are they using. Because if they do have any average of, of applications from, from the Africans, what average do they have? Because we cannot sit and say we are in a democratic country, whereas our, our people are, are still suffering because. Even if you check the, the, the total cabin crew, Africans 1,836, and the Indians are 315, and no, the Karat and the, the white are 11,984. Chairperson, it is worrying, it is worrying when, when you see the, the, trans, the trans, transformation that is not happening in this department. And the other one, Chairperson, is that one of the, of the, if you can check on, on staff numbers, 
on staff numbers, chairperson is it, again. There's no improvement. I don't know if they can give us some 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 kind of what is happening. Even the vacancies, they have a lot of vacancies that is, that is happening in in their in in, the, in this entity. So now, chairperson, the last one, chairperson, what I want to to get the clarity from from from, from them is that one of uh, human capacity management. If you check chairperson on the human human capacity management and uh, percentage of youth transformation programs, bursaries, trainees, and in, inter, internship, internship, they say it's 100% baseline and 100% five years. But there's no target. If if they base this one on on which target are they based on this one? Thank you, thank you very much, chairperson. <clears throat> Honorable McDonald. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for everybody for the presentation. Um, as you're well aware, this is one of my favorite entities. Um, um, I just have a couple of comments and questions. My first one is on the accident of the citation that Zulu Sierra, Charlie Alpha Romeo. When was this plane going to be replaced? Is it going to be being replaced? Because seeing with it, that we are this financial implications of COVID, it's it's going to also impact heavily on 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 our, the South African Civil Aviation Authority, and this will bring an additional burden. Is the department going to assist the South African Civil Aviation to quickly replace this aircraft because the flight inspection and calibration unit aircraft is sorely needed? And I know that there's plans to rent one or to source one in the meantime. But for for safety of your of of country's borders and your security, it's better to have your own. Um, Flight inspection and calibration unit. Then on 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 uh, still on the same subject on that aircraft. It's now been nearly five months since the accident. Um, there's no final report on the accident. When will this uh, accident uh, investigation uh, be finalised, and when will there be a final report? Then on the on the <coughs> uh, um, transformation in, in the civil aviation of, uh, uh, economy. It seems that we need to put pressure on on our flight schools, on cabin crew training schools, that that the prices of of to become a pilot for a black child must be reduced significantly so that we can alter the the, the way that things are at the moment. Because the the schools that we have influence in that we can take black students. In, Hello. Honorable Manu. Can we at least hear you? Yes, Chairperson, I'm here. Should I continue? Co continue. We'll, we'll, we'll apologize to the Honorable Member when he's back. Thank you, Chair. I think we need an investigation into the network in the free state. Chair. Let's welcome the presentation by Saka. Thank you, Chairperson and the DCA. Um, I think we should uh, note our appreciation and commend you for projecting that at least you can survive nine to ten months with all the scenarios that you have put in. Let's encourage you maybe as the industry is, is likely to open that hopefully you can trim and go beyond that. The second commendation I think that we should give is your achievement of 100% KPIs um, in the last couple of years. I think it's commendable and let us not see a, a regression. However, there has been a regression in your supply chain management. And supply chain management, we can link it to issues of black economic empowerment, procurement, and others. But you have seen a regression there. And I would like to encourage Chair and the DCA that uh, we keep a tight eye on the supply chain, especially with the windfall of money uh, to combat the COVID-19. We would not like to see a negative report there. 
of concern, Chairperson, is uh, last year you had an under expenditure of plus minus 50 million rand uh, in your budget. Um, it is of concern. And I would like to get a direct answer as to what would be the reason for deferring your CAPEX project infrastructure particularly because if we listen to the minister of finance he's anticipating that the industry that will be critical to reignite or recalibrate the economy will be infrastructure so i'm very concerned if amongst your deferments you are looking at infrastructure stroke capex unless that capex is not actually infrastructure in the construction simple tent. Jefferson, thank you very much. Honorable Makwazini. Thank you, Chair. Let me also join my colleagues by saying uh, we appreciate the presentation. The only thing that we never wanted was the Kosas family. Uh, we never wanted anything about their familiarity and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. Let me declare openly that the EFF rejects SACAS APP. <laughs> the 98 <laughs> aircraft accident. What is the cause of the accident, uh, Chair? And what do you do with the fatalities? in terms of insurances and other matters relating to accidents. Then the 40 learners, that is my last take, per year, how do they identify them? Is it through the Department of Education or do they headhunt them? If yes, how do they do it? Then finally, what do you do with the learners that have completed their courses? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chair, and please allow me to just thank uh, the South African Civil Aviation Street Corsa, who's been uh, assisting Just a moment, Honorable uh, Hansinger. Honorable Makosini? Honorable Makosi? Okay, he has gone to the kitchen, forgot to unmute. Continue, sir. Honorable Hansinger. Thank you, okay. Chair. Um, let me, or well, let me, Chair, to... Thank you, Chair. I'm, I'm proceeding. Um, allow me to thank Chair, um, CEO, for the um, inquiries and requests and guidance over the last period, particularly uh, when lockdown started and many issues um, were directed and had to be dealt with. So I want to thank her for all her assistance. Um, I still have a, a particular issue around uh, our civil aviation training schools um, and the fact that they are restricted. Between lockdown five to, from lockdown level five to lockdown level four, people, us human beings were allowed to go uh, for five kilos. And I'm sure there are particular circumstances where it could be considered and could be allowed that in particular aviation schools, training schools, are allowed in a restricted airspace to discontinue because a lot of them are threatened and being threatened. And it's not easy aviation schools and they are seriously so even currently in being under lockdown four i would really ask and request influence from civil aviation to please consider to allow civil aviation schools 
to in a restricted way um, at least for their own survival to be allowed to get the necessary flight hours for their students so that the local students that down would be allowed to complete their qualifications um, also in terms of inspection flights um, it could be and it can be organized in a very restricted way to restrict the airspace to allow inspection flights and smaller aircraft to continue so it's a bit on my right, not question maybe comment please to consider um, those couple of exceptions um, under the current conditions that we have because surely um, it could be done and it can be arranged thank you Chen. Honorable Mabena. Don't raise your hand. I've already given you an opportunity, Honorable Member. Oh, no. Let me, let me lower my hand virtually. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think perhaps uh, maybe uh, in line with what um, colleagues have, have said and presented, I think for a state-owned entity, when you present to a portfolio committee and you confidently say that you are in a position to to sustain yourself for the next seven months in a worst-case scenario, um, I think it's commendable to say the least, and I think it's it's it's, it's a job well done. Obviously, uh, seven months uh, is, is is not um, a a a, a long-term. Um, sustainability um, project that one can run, but in the next, the, the your ability to be self-sustainable for the next seven months is is really commendable. But the question now is on. Uh, Honourable Shabangu. Honourable Shabangu. Can you please mute? Can you please thank you very much? Continue, Honorable uh, Mapena. No, thank you so much to Honorable Chabango for muting again uh, when I speak. Um, my uh, mind is, for instance, on the beyond the seven months. There's been a number of stimulus packages which have been announced by the president and subsequently by the um, by the treasury. Um, looking beyond seven months um, and given your planning um, thereof, say maybe we are in a situation where um, lockdown um, persists, of which we're hoping it doesn't, we're praying that it doesn't. Um, have you, in your business plan, have you uh, applied for any um, of the stimulus packages, or have you submitted any plans whatsoever to Treasury? Have you submitted anything whatsoever to the relevant departments in order for you to be um, to be um, <clears throat> assisted? And then also with regards to um, calibration aircrafts, I think I would also um, say that if cargo aircrafts are being allowed in our airspace um, for as and when. Um, is, is necessary. I think there is also an opportunity um, for SACAR to also um, regulate the space. Obviously, albeit with limited um, personnel, but I think you can increase in that front because I think it's an important function that you need to carry out. But also on the issue of the accident which happened, I think Honorable McDonald uh, has covered that to say, what, what has been the update um, to date so far? Because uh, we are yet to hear anything in that regard. Um, and just lastly, Chair, the email address of the DCA, the one that she has provided, unfortunately, doesn't work. It bounces, just like the email address of the DG of Transport. Perhaps maybe it's a trend within the within this uh, forum or within this uh, uh, space that the emails that you're giving us always bouncing and we can't really get hold of you when we need to um, engage with you but just to note that uh, dc uh, causa email address is not working keeps on bouncing if perhaps you can assist 
so that as us as public representatives we can have access to the officials of the department and and the different um, uh, players within entities. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Ramadra. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson, for the opportunity that you have given me. Greetings to the Deputy Minister, the DG, Chairperson of the Board, CEO, and the team. Chairperson, I also like to join those who are appreciating the presentation. While it is admirable for the entity to achieve unqualified audit report previous financial years, it is, however, raises some concern that during 2018-2019 financial year, the entity received unqualified audit report with six findings, including irregular expenditure. What is the reason for not achieving unqualified without findings in 2018-2019? Lastly, is there is the entity having plan of action to address the issues that were raised by the AG? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Honorable Ramado. Um, to the chairperson of the NTT and the entourage. Chairperson, are you still here? Okay, the chairperson is not here. Uh, Honorable DM. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I thought that uh, you were in view of the challenge uh, with respect to time. Let's just go directly to the responses. No, that's not what I was saying. Okay. What I, what I was indicating is that um, we are to conclude around three o'clock because I got three hours at that time. My wish is that uh, the NTT should, in writing before or on Friday, give us responses to the questions that we posed to them because of time constraints. Otherwise, I think they are doing well. Um, keep on doing the good job. Uh, we understand COVID-19 will come with its challenges. Um, proceed doing what you need to do. Um, there are people who have raised issues of transformation. You have yet, we'll hear from you as you respond. Otherwise, let's get um, a word from the chair and a word from the DM so that we can proceed to the next item. Thank you so much. Can you hear me now, uh, chair? Yes, I can hear you. Sir. Thank you so much. Um, I, I hope I'm correct. Uh, your advice is that we're going to respond to all the questions in writing yes. by Friday. Yes. Thank you so much. We will, we, we will do so. Um, otherwise, uh, the, we wouldn't uh, do justice by um, um, providing uh, short responses to some of the questions, uh, in particular the question on um, on transformation, which is a very serious matter. I just want to uh, thank you on behalf of the board uh, for for the opportunity to to uh, to present. Um, and if you allow me, uh, Chairperson, I just want to ask the lead independent Professor Mango to thank you on our behalf before the DM closes. Prof. Okay. Prof. Uh, th th thank you, Chair of the Board. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairperson, 
of the portfolio committee, the honorable members, uh, our minister, deputy minister of transport, DG, DDG, the officials of uh, the Department of Transport, the, uh, the chairperson of the boards and executives. Chairperson, on behalf of the board of directors and the management of the SACA, we would like to thank you for giving us this opportunity to present the SACA five-year strategic plan and annual performance plan. We would also like to recognize and appreciate the unwavering support the board continues to enjoy from the Minister of Transport, uh, the Deputy Minister and their respective teams, as well as the entire Department of Transport officials. We are also grateful to the civil aviation industry and stakeholders for their engagement with the SACA and we look forward to working hand in hand as we navigate through this new normal with them. And lastly, but not least, the board wishes to thank the SACA management and employees for their effort and dedication to make the SACA what it is today. Thank you, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee. Thank you. DM, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, doctor. Uh, th thank you very much, Chairperson. Let me appreciate the way the meeting both of uh, uh, Airports Company and Civil Aviation has been handled and uh, uh, thank the members uh, that your, your probing questions are uh, food for thought that we as the department should be able to uh, to go through and be able to respond to you properly so but also to want to thank both chairpersons uh, of airports company and civil aviation and their ceos and the entire uh, their boards in in their entirety uh, to say that it is so good to work with people who actually uh, take everything very, very seriously so, because uh, when we talk of uh, making sure that the African skies uh, are safe, we really mean just that which have, has been presented. And even when we talk about the airports company the growth uh, of all of us in, in thinking, in stature, comes out of what we come across on a daily basis as we are working with the uh, caliber of the people in the boards and also in the executives of these uh, entities. I, I would also want to uh, thank the DG that uh, uh, directly, I don't need to, to thank the, the ship for swimming anyway, but let me indicate that the Director General uh, of the Department of Transport has got uh, almost all his fingers uh, on the pulse uh, of the department and uh, we really uh, need to say it while he can still hear it, that we uh, appreciate what he is doing. But uh, Chairperson, it is worth it to say beyond COVID-19, how do we reshape our businesses uh, in their entirety? How do we make sure that the uh, South Africans who are highly challenged uh, in terms of employment, in terms of food insecurity and other related matters uh, goes out of this uh, war, the invisible war of COVID-19, uh, escape but to a lesser extent and uh, we move swiftly to make sure that uh, having been bruised by the COVID-19 economically and socially, what are the tenants that we can put in place to, uh, uh, to sustain everything that we are having because it's about sustenance. Indeed, uh, civil aviation says uh, seven months they can be able to sustain themselves, but we should be able to indicate that 
we've seen internally within the department, we are looking at the, the, all, the entire uh, 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 state-owned entities and, and looking as to how best can we cushion uh, because it's not only the aviation industry, you go into public transport, you go into RAF, all those uh, are highly challenged and it is the department who should be able to say, how do we cushion uh, the challenges that uh, uh, we are having uh, due to the fact that some businesses have uh, really scaled down or completely will be shutting down. On that note, Chairperson, uh, I was looking at all the faces of the members and I didn't see the Monday morning blues. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you, um, DM and um, the department officials and the uh, entities that we saw today. Uh, continue to make us proud. Continue to be the shining beacon of the Department of Transport and bring hope to our people, all of them. Let's change the lives of South Africans for the better. Bring hegemony by empowering those who have not been empowered and do things correctly so that tomorrow we are not followed by any corruption issues irregular expenditures, ensure that we can uh, govern properly ourselves, DM, uh, and your team, teams that we have seen, we, you have made our day today. You have made our day, go back, do your work. We will always support you where we needed to support you and where we can criticize you. We will do that fully knowing the challenges that you are facing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson. Chair, Thank you so much. Chair um, unfortunately, the meeting has to be adjourned. There's another recording started now, starting now with another committee. Unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> let's, let's adjourn this meeting. We will deal with our minutes in our next ensuing meeting. But thanks to everybody. Thank you once more. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair, for the members. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.